Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Quotes YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today we'll be taking you through HTML and JavaScript. JavaScript is used along with HTML almost every time we work on the front end of any web page. In the last video we came across cascading style sheet or CSS and now that we have an idea about how to design and style any web page. Let's see what else we can do with a web page to make it more interactive to the user. So before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates on programming videos. So without any further delay, let's get started. JavaScript is a lightweight scripting language used to make a web page more interactive and livelier to the user. It is one of the most popular scripting languages present in world today. It's almost impossible to cover the whole of JavaScript in one small video because JavaScript in itself is an interesting topic. In this video, we'll go through the ways to attach JavaScript with HTML and some basic examples of what this language can do. So to include JavaScript in an HTML document, we can either keep the JavaScript code in a separate file and then include it wherever it's needed, or we can just define functions inside the HTML document itself using the script tag. Let's go through both the cases one by one. Firstly, we'll create an external JavaScript file. The benefit of using an external JavaScript file is if we are going to define a functionality, which will be used in various HTML documents, then it's better to keep that functionality in a separate JavaScript file and then include that file in your HTML documents. It will help us keep the HTML document neat and organized as well. So a JavaScript file always has a .js extension and the script tag is used to attach a JavaScript file to an HTML document. Let's move on to the programming part directly and then we'll see what we can do with JavaScript. Let's create a JavaScript file first. So we'll go here and we'll click on create a file. Now we'll create a file. Let's say the file name is going to be new.js. .js is the extension here and we have the JavaScript file now. Now it's time to attach the JavaScript file to our HTML document. We'll use the script tag after the body. So what we'll do is we'll move here and we'll write here script. Now inside the script tag, we need two attributes. First one is going to be src. src is going to be new.js as this file is saved in that same folder. The next attribute we need is type. So we'll write here type. Type is going to be text slash javascript. Fine. So src here defines the path where a file is actually saved and type defines the type of file that is JavaScript in this case. So we are done with attaching the file. Now let's move on and make our web page a bit interactive to the user. Fine, we can write small functions known as event handlers and then trigger them using HTML only. Adding responsiveness to a web page means defining an event that will tell the system to perform a specific action upon calling. Sounds a bit confusing, right? So let's understand it with the help of an example. We are all aware of adding buttons to a web page, right? So if the user clicks on a button, then what should happen? We can either create a pop-up alert on the button click or we can do whatever we want. So let's create a button here first and we'll then add functionality to it. Fine. So here we are in a HTML document. We'll create a button over here. So we'll write over here button and let's say the button name is going to be external for external file. Save it now and you can see we have a button over here on the browser. Fine. Now click on it and you can see nothing is happening as of now. So let's add some functionality to this button now. For that, what we'll do is we'll write here inside the button tag. We'll define an event first. So let's say we are writing over here on click and we'll call a function on button click. Fine. So let's say a function name is going to be message and save it now fine what we are doing here is we are asking the system to call the message function on clicking this particular button let's define this message function in a javascript file now so here we are in a javascript file 
Now we need to create a function named message. Fine. So we'll write here function message and this is the syntax for creating a function in JavaScript. Now we'll write over here alert. Inside alert we'll write button clicked. Fine. So here we have this message over here. Now this alert is a method present in JavaScript for creating pop-ups. Save the program and now click on the button over here. You can see we have a pop-up here which says button click. You can see the message right over here. Now the number of such things we can do with JavaScript is uncountable. Let's move ahead and we'll see another method of using JavaScript with HTML. The internal script method we can use for this. This method is useful if we want to use JavaScript for a particular file or a particular tag. We can write our script code directly into our HTML document. Usually, we keep the script code in the header section of the document using the script tag. Otherwise, there is no such restriction and we can put our source code anywhere in the document but inside the script tag. So we'll move back to our HTML file and we'll create another button over here. This time we'll use the internal script tag to add functionality to it. Fine. So we'll move to the body section and here we are going to create a button. So we'll use the break tag first. Again a break tag. Now we are going to create a button. Then the button name is going to be internal. Save it and you can see we have this internal button over here as well. Click on external and you can see we are getting a message. Click on internal, you can see nothing is happening as of now. Now to add functionality to this button, we need to add an event first. So we'll move inside the button tag and we'll get right here on let's say mouse over. So this is another event we have in JavaScript. We'll see what this event can do in a while. So we'll write over here the function name. So let's say the function name is going to be internal for this particular button. Save it now. And now what we are going to do is we are going to define the JavaScript part. Fine. We'll move to the head section of our HTML document and we'll write here script. The script tag will remain the same in both the cases. Here you can see we have defined the SRC and type but here what we are doing is we are using it internally. So we'll create the function over here only. So we'll write over here function internal and this is going to be the body of this function and we'll write something over here inside the alert box. So let's say we are writing over here internal script tag. Fine. Save this program and move back to the browser. Now you can see the moment we take a mouse cursor over this internal button, a pop-up will appear with the message internal script tag. You can see the message over here. Fine. This is because of the on mouse over event we used. So guys, we went through both the methods of adding JavaScript to an HTML document. I hope you guys got it. Although JavaScript is a very long topic to discuss. It is a language and if you want to learn it, then you can go through our channel and find the JavaScript playlist here. So that's all for this video guys. See you in the next one where we'll go through HTML layouts. If you enjoyed watching this video, then do give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, do let us know in the comments. Please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Simply Code. Thank you.